Let's say you want to drive an Nixie tube like this and you want to make a counter that counts from 0 to 9 and then flips back to 0. So today you would probably take chips like this. 74 series, they are rather old but still useful. You would probably also use a some sort of microcontroller that you could program with the inputs and the outputs. Let's take, for example, the 74 series chips here. What you would need is one binary counter with an input, with a clock pulse here, binary counter and then you get four outputs A, B, C and D. That's the usual marking of these outputs here. The value of course is 1, 2, 4 and 8 and any combination of that uh, will, be, will represent a decimal number from 0 to 15. Of course, we can't count to 15 with a Nixie tube like that. It only has 10 uh, numbers inside from 0 to 9. So we also need a reset input. And we could reset that counter when it reaches 10 because we want to display 9. 9 is fine, but 10 we don't need that. So 10 would be number 2 in value and number 8. And as I said, it's 2 and 8, so we need an AND gate going to that reset like so. Now we have a counter that counts from 0 to 9 in binary. But binary doesn't help here because we have one pin for each uh, number. So we need a decoder. And the decoder chip, that's also one of the 74 series chips, has four inputs and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10 outputs. It's a 4 to 10 decoder or something like that. Okay, now we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, one output after the other uh, turns on. And then we could drive the Nixie tube, but not directly because Nixie tubes, let me draw it here. It has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 inputs and it has a common anode that needs about 150 volts DC. And one thing is clear with the 74 series driver you can't drive 150 volts. There are some high voltage drivers. I think they go up to 70 volts or something. Well, that's not a big problem. We only need a transistor here that goes probably to ground with the emitter here. Uh, I don't know, maybe we need a resistor here and go to the first number, which is probably number one. And so on. Uh, we, of course, need also a resistor here and probably one here and that should be fine. Yeah. Uh, that's probably not a super precise schematic, but you see where we are going. 
So that means we need 10 transistors here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all connected here and going there over there. We need also 30 resistors, maybe more, maybe less. We need one chip, we need two chip, we need another chip with the end here, or maybe an end if this is negative here. So three chips, 10 transistors, a lot of stuff. Now the question is, how did they do that before these chips uh, came on the market? like that. That's a piece from my HP frequency counter. Well, no, it's not from the frequency counter. It's just from the uh, scalar counter. And uh, if you look at that, it has eight transistors. Uh, no chips, no nothing. Just a big black box here and the Nixie tube over here. So the question is, they didn't use any integrated circuits. Maybe that is one. I don't know. How did they do that in 1966 without the 74 series? which was just invented in the early 60s, maybe 1964, 65. But as you know, it always takes some time until the engineers adapt to new technology. They more likely stay with old technology, something they knew how it works, something they have uh, experience with. So what did they do? Eight transistors. That's not enough to drive the Nixie tube. So, oh. so here is a similar board. Uh, it has the same function. It just uses different transistors. They are a little bit smaller. That means they are a little bit faster because that's the five megahertz version of this this board here, which is a little bit slower. So they took larger transistors that are cheaper, slower, whatever. Circuit is almost the same and I have already opened the cover here, which reveals something. It's a ceramic uh, thing with something that looks like a, well, maybe a resistor array. And I can tell you it is a resistor array, so it has a common wire or a common connection here. And it has 10 individual resistors that go, well, directly to the Nixie tube here to supply it with voltage or to drain voltage, whatever. But where is the decoder? We still have eight transistors. According to the schematic I just made, that's not enough. So where is the trick? The trick is here. Let me flip that open. Carefully. There is a insulator. And what we see here is quite spectacular because it is so simple and genius. I would give the developer of this the Nobel Prize. We have uh, neon lamps here, eight, uh, eight pieces exactly like eight transistors here. Maybe that's related somehow. And we have this looks like a thin film chip 
device which is connected directly to the Nixi tube gets high voltage from that side or maybe that goes to ground there is one wire that I had to disconnect so what the hell are they doing here? hmm I'd say let's have a look on the schematic diagram that will explain a lot well I have to say this diagram here is not from this unit uh, this is from another HP frequency counter but it seems they use the same technology in all their counting device with Nixie tubes at least uh, the older ones so this schematics is from 1966 and uh, it shows about how that works so we can see clearly we have eight transistors here in pairs of two and all two transistors together are one flip-flop as you probably know a flip-flop is a device that gets one impulse in on the input that's the signal input here and depending on which transistor is already on it changes that state and turns the other transistor on it flips uh, the state of the two transistors from one side to the other next impulse flops it back then flip then flop then flip then flop and then if you cascade them so the output of this transistor here goes to the next input here so we have a binary counter and as any binary counter with just four flip-flops cascaded together it would of course count to 15 before it jumps back to zero that's something we don't want so the engineers of HP intelligent as they are uh, found another way they connected the four flip-flops together in a way that they count like this so the first when they start after the reset it's zero then they count one two three so far so good that's correct binary counting then they jump to six seven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and then it jumps back to zero by itself we don't need a reset an additional reset uh, circuit here so what they did is they just connected the four flip-flops in a different way not just one after the other but for example flip-flop 2 goes to flip-flop 3 and 4 together let me see if that is true uh, I haven't completely understood how it works because here in the schematic it just looks like one input one output goes to the next input and so on and I can't see how, what they actually do but there is a description in the in the head uh, in the maintenance manual here and uh, well they explain how they count and at the end it doesn't matter how you count it only matters matters how you decode the whole stuff and that your Nixie tube at the end shows numbers from 0 to 9 so what they did is they jumped a couple of numbers to get only 10 individual binary patterns and they decode these patterns to 10 Nixie tube display numbers so here on the top that's the Nixie tube it has a common anode here that goes to plus 170 volts uh, funny fact they have uh, where is it here for example ground 
is at plus 20 volts. So that's not a zero volt ground, they have a 20 volt ground for this module. And that means this voltage is effectively not 170 volt, but 150 volt. And the, and the minus 130 is effectively minus 150 in respect to that ground here. So we have plus minus 150 volts. That's 300 volt across the whole decoder and Nixie tube circuit here. So what do they do? We have these symbols here. Maybe I should go a little bit closer. Yes. That's clearly a resistor with some arrows that indicate a resistor that reacts to incoming light. And we also have our two transistors and the two neon bulbs here. So one neon bulb is on when it uh, counts zero, the other is for the one, or one for the yes and one for the no, or however you want to take that. So, for example, this is Nixie tube uh, number nine, display number nine. Number nine would turn on if that resistor gets light and that resistor gets light. So it's A and D. Let me see. No. Okay, I'm already a little bit puzzled here. Let's say A and B. That would be three. Hmm. Oh, no, A and D, A and D, A and D. We don't have A and D without the others, but we have A, B, C, D. So A and D is on, that goes on. Then we have C and B, but they can't turn on because, well, A is also here. But to turn this on, we also need D negative or a zero on the D counter. So that's A, B, C, D. Okay. That means one, 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 one on the output gives us number nine because A and D is on. B and C is also on, also A but not that one. So this path here is blocked. The only path that is open is that one. Let's see, we have only A. That means number one. Where is only A? So D, negative, yes. A, yes. Uh, C, no. B, no, leads us to number one. Right. So that's how this works. A very clever arrangement of uh, photosensitive uh, resistors reacting to the neon lamps that are driven by these uh, flip-flops and that decodes our uh, signals to the Nixie tube. I'd say that's pretty clever. Okay then, let's put it together again and see if it's still working. I hope so. Uh, let's first clean that.
and here are some patent numbers and some part numbers. I doubt that you will find a lot about this, but maybe if you want, you have something to look at. I have also fixed the noisy fan here, so mechanically it was okay. Bearings still good, but I noticed that the coil here was shaking on the core. So I simply jammed a little bit of wood between this, so now it's not moving at all. Should be tight, should be silent. Let's put it back into the device. Well then, let's see if it's still working. And yes, fan is still noisy, so that didn't help a lot. But at least the display is still working, so that's a good result. And it's still counting 10 kilohertz. Okay, thanks for watching.